It's now my great pleasure and honor to introduce our first speaker of the day, our governor. Welcome. I've been the director of the Criminal Justice Commission for just over four years now. And every now and then, Governor Brown uh, will send me a, a clipping or some sort of a, a article or a study relating to criminal justice issues. Uh, the most recent example is a, a study relating to uh, recidivism rates and a national comparison. Uh, and I might add that the state of Gore Oregon uh, was touted as having the gold standard definition for recidivism in the country. So. <laughs> so whenever I receive one of these articles, I always really appreciate it for two reasons. Um, the first is because uh, usually I've already read it myself. So that makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing, I'm on the right track. Uh, but second and more importantly, it shows that we have a governor who cares about fa our issues facing public safety and the criminal justice system, and one who not only understands it, but is intellectually curious about the things and the challenges that we are, that we are tackling every day. A few years ago, uh, my staff and I heard that the governor was reading The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. So of course, that led me and my team to read The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. Reading through that book made us intellectually curious about how the war on drugs was affecting Oregon and the rates at which minorities were overrepresented in our system. So we studied the issue. Uh, and we got together with law enforcement. We looked at Oregon data. We looked at our numbers uh, and discussed the disparate impact that the collateral consequences of felony convictions were having on minority communities in our state. And that set the table for the conversation that led to the passage of House Bill 2355 the bill that makes some of the possession of controlled substance convictions misdemeanors rather than felonies, and set up the statistical transparency of policing system, the STOP system. So sometimes all it takes is a gentle nudge in the right direction to make big change happen. So without further ado, uh, it's my pleasure to please welcome to the stage our governor, Kate Brown. Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you've bought your chocolates and your flowers. It's probably not too late if you haven't. And it's also another very special day today. Oregon's birthday, yes. It's our, it's our 160th birthday, at least by my math. Don't trust it, I'm a lawyer. So um, happy 160th birthday to Oregon. Thanks so much for having me here today. I'd especially like to thank uh, one of my judges, uh, Judge Waller. You in the room? She here? I want to give her a round anyway. I know we've got county commissioners from all over the state here. Um, thank you for your leadership. They've been in Salem, I think, since Monday or Tuesday. Could we have our county elected officials stand up? Thank you. Hi. Hey, how are you? Some of them couldn't get home because of the snow and the ice in the gorge. Uh, to the staff at CJC, uh, Mike, Tiffany, and the rest of the staff who've worked so hard to make today's event possible, thank you so much for your efforts. So as your governor, I've spent a considerable amount of time meeting with Oregonians uh, from across the state. And I hear from families who struggle with a lot of different issues, and I hear a lot of stories that would have been different uh, if they'd had an ounce of prevention in that family. And I'm just really grateful that you're all here this morning bringing your various viewpoints together to figure out how we provide more ounces of prevention to our families across the state. Everyone here today knows that between 2000 and 2010, in just a short 10-year span, our prison rate increased by 50%. As our inmate roles grew, so did our corrections budget. Change came fast, and it came very hard, and it was very expensive. We knew it would take more than 10 years to reverse that trend, 
but in the decades since, we're making progress on changing that trajectory. And I'd like to reflect on the steps that brought us here today. In 2013, my predecessor signed House Bill 3194 into law, creating the Justice Reinvestment Program in Oregon. Almost immediately, counties like Marion, Lane, and Multnomah began the hard work of decreasing their prison usage while keeping their communities safe. The reductions by those and other counties have saved the state from building a new prison. I'm deeply grateful for your efforts. <laughs> However, we haven't completely avoided growth. In fact, a few years ago, we were very concerned about opening a new facility to house our women's population. And some of you might recall that I actually put it in my budget for the 1719 biennium. Well, uh, the women legislators uh, stood up. Uh, they were appalled and absolutely opposed to a uh, new women's uh, correctional facility. And so the answer became House Bill 3078. Since that time, our female prison population has decreased by almost 100 offenders, averting the need to open an additional facility. And if our forecasts hold, we will not have to consider opening additional facilities for years to come, and that is very good news. Although not strictly a JRI initiative, I also want to take a moment to talk about another bill that I signed into law in 2017, House Bill 2355. Uh, as most of you in this room know, House Bill 2355 reduced some possession of controlled substance crimes to misdemeanors. We did that, as Mike just mentioned, because the data clearly showed people of color were disproportionately impacted by the enforcement of this felony. It's early, but in the first year after passage, we saw felony convictions drop by 2,000. Racial disparity around possession of controlled substances was decreased for black Oregonians by 80%. So that's really good news. And uh, not that I give, need to give anybody in this room uh, more homework, but I want to encourage all of you to read the CJC report. It highlights the issue of how we are keeping people out of cycle of felony convictions and its many collateral consequences. We are now working hard to ensure that we are addressing addictions, substance use disorder as a health issue instead of a criminal one. And so if you want some more homework, I'd also urge you to follow along with my Opioids Task Force legislation, House Bill 2257, which is focused on this approach. I was really pleased when we heard the bill last week. Uh, sitting at the panel, I think I was in the middle. On the uh, left uh, from Multnomah County was uh, County Commissioner uh, Sharon Myron. And on the right, uh, not literally, but figuratively, uh, was Senator Dennis Linthicum from Klamath Falls. So it was really great to have that diversity of perspectives all in favor of this particular le legislation. So we're very uh, optimistic about his chances of passing this session. And while the, uh, yeah, I'm like, applause, yay, okay. You guys are awake, that's good. And uh, while big counties and sleeping uh, legislative initiatives rightly get a lot of credit for uh, the reduction in numbers, smaller communities around the state are certainly making a difference as well. In Josephine County, the district attorney's office and community corrections have worked closely to identify offenders who can be safely supervised locally using evidence-based tools to assess risks and needs. They have expanded their capacity for housing, treatment in the community, and secure treatment in custody. As a result, Josephine County has reduced prison sentences and increased access to treatment and services for people convicted of property and drug crimes. And I believe that the district attorney, uh, Mulkins, is here. Do we have, there he is, way in the back of the room. So thank you. And uh, the Josephine County Community Corrections Director, Nate uh, Gawiren, is also here. So thank you for uh, joining us today. 
In Deschutes County, after receiving an evidence-based assessment, clients receive intensive supervision, housing resources, treatment, cogn cognitive behavioral therapy, and access to resources to help break down barriers that keep folks from meeting their supervision obligations. The number of people successfully completing supervision has increased as a result of this project. Therefore, fewer folks are going to prison, and that's also good news. So thank you, Deschutes County, for the work you're doing. Of course, no undertaking of this size and scope would happen without its fair share of growing pains, and certainly we've seen some of those here. There are counties who have received JRI grants for six years this July who have not managed the way they use uh, prison or haven't changed the way uh, they've managed to use prison. As a mon matter of fundamental fairness, I want resources to go to those communities who are truly participating. I've asked the CJC to evaluate whether it makes sense to continue funding these counties who have not managed to bend the curve of prison consumption after six years of investment. So that's a warning. Um, it's also worth noting that as our community corrections officers around the state are asked to supervise more medium and high risk offenders under JRI, our recidivism rates have remained flat. To me, that means JRI does not reduce safety in our communities, and that's a really good thing. However, uh, we are investing a sizable amount of money into these programs that is above and beyond the baseline funding model. My budget allocates $46 million toward JRI, so we absolutely must re reduce our recidivism rates, and I'd love your help in doing that. We should also be thoroughly mining the data to understand why folks are unsuccessful and reoffending. Uh, the data we now have at our fingertips is really amazing, and I'm hoping we can really uh, dig down deep and figure out what's going on when we're not seeing success. So I look forward to working with you as we continue to develop innovative programs that make our communities even safer, and let's ensure that our offenders are more productive when they leave our system, hopefully to never return. I know some of you have had an opportunity to get to Norway. I haven't been yet. I'm hoping that's on the uh, tour schedule in the next couple of years. Uh, but in Norway, citizens believe that offenders are their future neighbors. Everyone sees their reform as an investment in their community, and it truly is. So we know that when we make meaningful change in behavioral health treatment and addiction cover recovery, we lift the burden off of our prisons, off of our hospitals, and our law enforcement. With your hard work, and hopefully with your help and your support, we can continue to better address the needs of adults involved in the criminal justice system making them better neighbors for all Oregonians. Thank you all so much for everything that you do, for your dedication and your determination for making Oregon a better place for everyone. Have a great day. There's so many people here. I've heard uh, we're breaking attendance numbers at 1,400, so let's go get them. Thank you.